Tell me about your like story like, area, and like your football background. Yeah, so I grew up right here in Spanish Fork. This is actually my high school I used to play at. So being here reminds me of all the you know all the time I spent growing up with my dad, with my teammates, my high school coaches. Um, really just all the time that goes into playing sports. I don't think a lot of people realize that when you're a young athlete, you're playing usually a couple of different sports and you gotta learn to balance your time with school and family and friends. So you know, for me, it was always really busy, but I think it helped me you know, learn to be disciplined and, and just a lot of life lessons. I have a lot of older brothers. So playing football was something I came into early and it's something I fell in love with early, so it kept me going, having so much fun on the football field. Whether it was, I didn't get, to, I don't remember coming to these little camps, but I wish I would have. But every time I had a chance to step on the football field, it was that was always my home away from home. That's a that's a loaded question. That's a good question. Um, success, I think success shows up in so many different ways. You know, whether it's you're meeting your goals, um, you're winning games, you're growing. I think for me, success, because you can't always be perfect, you're going to make mistakes. I think success is just learning from your mistakes and getting better. You know, you can look at a scoreboard all you want, but life is so much more meaningful than just a sport. So I think when you learn from your lessons, you grow, you build relationships, I think that's success in life, but that's, that's just me. Good question. Um, I say I, I, for me, I guess success would be finding happiness in what you do. I love playing football. I love being around the people that are in, vi in my football environment. I love being with the teammates, my coaches from the, the first year of football to my, my first year now in the NFL, every coach. Um, the people that you interact with, it's a special bond out here on the football field, and especially when you have those 11 guys out you on Friday night or Saturday night or Sunday night, whichever comes. Um, having a blast when you're out there, being at where your feet are in that moment, having uh, trying to be in that moment as much as you can because that's when you're, when you're in that moment, you're going to have the most fun. Um, what would you tell a young athlete getting, um, getting in late to like, their sport? It's, ne it's never too late. You know, it's never too late. I think, you know, again, back to just hard work. The amount of time you choose to put into something, I think, you know, it will define if, you, you know, if you're successful at it. Um, it doesn't matter if someone's played a couple more years than you or a couple more months than you. You know, when you get into it, wherever you're at, you just take it serious every day. You put time in. You find people who, who do what you love. You ask them questions. You learn. Man, it's, it's, it's never too late. I think there's a lot of successful athletes and business people that have gotten into the game really late and they've come out on top. So I just think it's about how you apply your time and how much you really want to you know, go through the grind in the process. Have fun and believe and trust in yourself. I would say the biggest thing. If you're starting late, to trust in yourself. Whether, um, yeah just to believe in yourself. The work that you put in is like, only you can put in the work to get you where you want to go. So whether you feel like you're behind everybody else who's going, um, each day you have the opportunity to get better than you were the day before. So I'd say trusting yourself would be that process of, hey, one day I can only do so much in that 24 hours, but the next day I'm trying to build upon what I've already done. So just trust in yourself. My favorite memory is throwing touchdowns to this dude in, in, in Pro Bowl in the Garver Stadium. That's, uh, it was, it's, it's special just playing there with my teammates playing with guys like Puka, um, there's just so many to think of, and that's just because I've played for so long, you know, it's, um, there's a lot of good memories, a lot of bad memories, but just the whole experience up to this point, it just kind of bunches together, there's a lot of, a lot of happy memories to make one big memory, I guess. Mm. That's a tough one, I'd probably say the, the Utah game in 2021, my first, uh, coming to BYU my first year, and then uh, the... We had number three in the backfield who broke the curse for us. So that was one game at Lavelle Edwards Stadium that I will never forget. The fans, the environment, being able to play with my brother, have uh, our quarterback out here steal the deal for us and win that game. Uh, that was a, that was one I was super excited for. I can't wait to tell my kids that story for sure. That's great. We were at that game. That was a blast. We went to like, all, the, all the games, like, all the home games. I want a Super Bowl. That's my bucket list. That's my one thing I want to do. I want to win a Super Bowl one day. That's the one and only. Yeah. yeah. I don't know, actually. Uh, Super Bowl has got to be one of them for sure. At least play in the game. <laughs> yeah. At least have a chance to say I want to go to Disneyland after. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Well, me and my brothers have been admiring you guys since, like, since, like ever since. Well, shout out to little bro. <laughs> thanks, Rocky, for coming, and thanks for interviewing us. And everybody go check out the channel for sure. <laughs>